Hey guys, this is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching and welcome to my laboratory. It's, it's what we're gonna be using over the next several videos because I have a free training series for you, The Mixologist, right? So we're teaching how to become a mixologist. What is a mixologist? Well, if you watch tennis, what is tennis all about? I want you to think about it for a second. How do you really, truly go out and win matches consistently? What is tennis a game of? To me, it's a game of balance. Many sports are a game of balance, especially if you've watched at a very high level. If a professional is on balance, has time, they're not gonna miss. So what you're constantly trying to do at the professional and the amateur level is to give challenging shots to your opponents. Things that knock them off balance, make them feel unsteady, give them a challenge, don't let them get into the zone. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create unforced errors and set up opportunities for winners. So what we're gonna be going over these next several videos are ways to help you do that. So in video one, what we're gonna be going through are six essential ingredients you're gonna to need to become a certified mixologist. Very exciting. In video number two, what I'm gonna show you is what I think the number one skill you wanna start doing and focusing on every time you enter the tennis court. So whether you're just practicing or you're getting ready for a match, this is what I want you to focus on every single time. I actually learned it from a master professional, Nick Saviano, who's coached countless of WTA and ATP players. And it's really, really good. You're gonna love it. In video three, what you're gonna see is me put the mixologist's six key ingredients to the test. I'm gonna be playing uh, players around your level, the three, five, four, oh, we find that's a lot of people on our list are around that skill level. And I'm gonna show you by varying and using all these six ingredients that you're gonna to learn today, what it does to your competition. And then in video four, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a plan on how you can put this all together. So you can be that certified mixologist if you wanna be. Now before we get started, if you don't know who I am, if you're new to my list or you're watching this on YouTube, my name is Peter Freeman. I'm a USPTA elite professional. I've been coaching and playing now for 35 plus years. Makes me wanna cry in a good way and a bad way. I think you know what that means. But I've been coaching and playing a long time. I've been lucky enough to work with some true legends of the game like Rod Laver, John Newcomb, Fred Stuy, Roy Emerson, Murphy Jensen, Brian Gottfried, Rick Leach, and it's that's that's been an honor for me. I I've also been the USTA Georgia Pro of the Year right here in this great state. I've been named the USTA Georgia Pro of the Year. If you go on Midwest Sports, you can see that I do the Tuesday tip of the week for them. And my YouTube channel has been viewed millions of times all over the world and has been named top 10 instructional channels in the world by Lessons.com. Now I tell you this not to brag, it really sounds like I'm bragging right now, but what I want you to do is just be comfortable knowing that if you're looking for expert advice on how you can add variety into your game so you can win more matches, that you're in the right place at the right time if you're looking to learn how to do this systematically. All right, now before we get started, we're about to get into these six essential ingredients, which I'm really excited to share with you. What I want you to do is invite you to watch every video to the end because you're able to do that, I'm gonna reward you. We got a really cool prize in this three-part series and I reward people who watch videos to the end and then they comment. They let me know what their challenges are so that I can greater help you. Okay, so when you do that, if you stick around to the end, you're gonna see what you can possibly win just by watching videos and learning. Isn't that pretty cool? All right, so let's get into the six essential ingredients you're gonna to need to become a mixologist. Coming up, ingredient number one. Okay, so guys, ingredient number one, what you're gonna need. When we're playing tennis, there's three basic spins that you can put on pretty much all your shots. You have the ability to hit a ball flat, you can hit the ball with top spin, and you can put underspin on the ball. So how are you gonna, what, what's the first ingredient you need to be able to do that, whether you're hitting a serve or a forehand or a backhand? What you're gonna need are the technical skills. That's ingredient number one, because it's a different pathway to the ball if I wanna chip a ball versus if I wanna to hit topspin. So you gotta to know how you're going to hit that. You wanna have the right technique so you can do it not by accident, so you can actually mean to do it. So, so when I go to hit a slice serve, 
I'm gonna be swinging at the ball different than if I were to hit a kick serve. So there's, there's different things that I'm gonna do on each shot and we're gonna teach you how to do that inside the mixologist. So that's the first thing, guys, is establishing your technique. You must get some form of mastery over your shots so you can intentionally vary your spins and heights and pace and all that kind of cool stuff. Okay, so ingredient number two, one of the things that I think is a big mistake that amateur players go out and make is you wanna go out there and you wanna groove. Have you ever gone out there with, with, with a buddy and you're just grooving cross court? You just get in the zone, you feel great, and you're like, man, I'm hitting the ball so solid today, right? I hit the ball so solid. And you definitely wanna be able to hit the ball solid, but what are all those balls doing right there? All those balls are hitting, they feel great off your racket, but they also feel great off your competition's racket because every ball is coming the same pace, and it's coming right in the same strike zone. So something often overlooked is varying intentionally your height over the net, all right? So height is a big mixologist weapon, okay? A big key to becoming a really good mixologist is varying your height. So besides just having that solid ball that you can hit over the net, you also wanna be able to hit the ball higher and have it drop in, right? You wanna, you wanna be able to mix up the different heights on the ball it's because when you're mixing up your heights and you're going low over the net and a little higher over the net and a little higher over the net and a little higher over the net you see how every time i was able to bring it lower higher and bring it up and down off the scale now what's happening your opponent's strike zone where they're hitting the ball it's changing so one time they're hitting it here then another time you're bringing them down here then in here it's completely unpredictable it's throwing your opponent off balance it's taking them out of their zone, off their rhythm. So that's a big key ingredient that you're gonna need to become a mixologist. All right, let's move on to key ingredient number three. Okay guys, so essential ingredient number three that you're gonna need to be a really good mixologist out there, the ability to mix up things, is the ability to mix up pace. So what I want you to think about is baseball, right? If you're trying to make the major leagues and you only have a slow ball, well, we know that's, that's probably not gonna last too long. They're gonna be rocking you, hit a lot of home runs. But what if you just have a fastball? What if you're somebody who can just go out there and throw that ball, you know, 100 miles an hour? Well, you'd probably get a job in Major League Baseball, but you might just be a relief pitcher to where if that's the only thing you could do, it might just last for a couple of innings where you can blow someone away, but then eventually really good teams are gonna to start to read that that's all you have. And as a tennis player, we don't have the luxury to go out there and just play a couple of games and then call in somebody else to then come off the bench and then play a, more, a couple more games for us. We've gotta be able to be that starting pitcher in baseball that can start a game and finish a game, and in fact, it's gotta be even better for us because even a starting pitcher can call in the relief pitcher at the end of the game. But what does a starting pitcher typically have? They have good stuff. They can, they can throw the fastball, they can throw a curveball, they can throw a changeup, they might have a knuckleball. They have lots of variety. So when you're playing tennis, again, lots of times it feels good to play at a certain pace. You hit that ball solid, right? You hit that ball solid, you're like, yeah, that feels good. But if you're just hitting that one pace, eventually your, your opponents are gonna catch on to that. So I want you to think of yourself like a 10 speed bike. Not saying you have to have 10 different speeds, but you should be able to go uh, from down to up and back and down, up and down the dial with your pace. So we're gonna see here that you want the ability to hit a ball slow. Some people I know can't even vary their pace from slow, they can only hit hard. So look at this, watch how I use this, how I start kind of like slow and easy, and then each time I can add a little more of the ball, and they're all still going in, okay? That last one might have got a little long, but I think you get the idea, is the ability to ramp up your speed, and the cool thing too, is even just going from, watch this, these two different swings, from this one, right, to this one, which I didn't change the pace that much, but that might be enough to create an error to where they're like, they're seeing, they think it's the same ball, but then all of a sudden it's got a little extra jump on it. So it's not like you wanna be going from down here to up there and then back down. You can go from here to there and create an error. 
You can go from here to there and create an error. So you're always mixing up. Mixing up that pace is gonna throw your opponent off balance, off rhythm. So there you go, that's key ingredient number three. Let's get to key ingredient number four for you. All right, key ingredient number four is the ability to intentionally master your depths. This is absolutely huge. First of all, I do know now from working with you all for a couple of years now that a lot of people on my list, they're over the age of 50. So this is, a, this is where it really becomes important because think about it, what do we not do, we, I, and myself included, we start not to move back as well and forward as well, right? These become more and more challenging. So if you want to win more matches, being able to make your opponents pay for playing in no man's land. Because people don't move as well as they once did, lots of people are going to stand right in no man's land. And if you can't make them pay, if you can't get the ball at their feet or make them back up, you know, then you are missing out on golden opportunities to win matches and points easily. So it's that ability. One, one shot you want to be able to maybe hit a nice heavy top spin ball deeper there towards the back target and then maybe you might change your grip for the next ball because you see them backing up and then you get to move into the court a little bit and then you might want to hit a short chip shot right there at the next target so where now they're backing up, now they're spraying forward. Varying the height and spin and depth of your balls these are very, very crucial to become a certified mixologist. And by doing that, you're going to win matches a lot easier. It's a lot easier than just going, well, I'm just going to hit this ball solid all day and create a bunch of winners. Because you know what else is going to happen? You're also going to miss a lot. A lot of unforced errors. And you're also keeping your opponent in the zone. I cannot stress, the more solid you hit the ball, they're getting grooved. They're getting grooved. I'd much rather see a player make their opponent hit here, 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 all these different areas, move up a little bit, move back. This is how you create errors, guys. This is how you win matches. All right, let's get to key ingredient number five. Okay, guys, so key ingredient number five is mastering your shot selection. This is where tennis starts to become a little more like chess, right? It's where you got to be ahead of your opponent by a couple of shots and knowing that based on where you are on the court, whether you're in or you're backing up, what are the right shots to play? If you're getting a short ball that's lower and skidding versus a ball that's sitting up here, how are you gonna handle that ball? How much spin are you gonna put on the ball? Are you gonna hit top spin or slice? These are all the things that you wanna be thinking about with your shot selection that's gonna have you playing smart tennis on autopilot because what we're gonna show you inside the mixologist course is that based on where you are, what type of ball you're receiving, you're gonna automatically make your decisions. It's gonna start to become automatic where you don't have to think about it. Because what you do have to consider is you wanna consider four things. Number one, you wanna consider where you are on the court. That's the number one thing you wanna think about when you're getting ready to hit the ball. Number two is where is your opponent on the court? Okay, so where is your opponent now? And the next thing you want to think about is what type of ball are you receiving? Are, are you receiving a ball that's coming slower? Is it coming faster? Is it coming lower? Is it coming higher? What type of spin is on the ball? And then finally you want to think about when I hit this shot, where do I need to recover? So that's a lot of things that you need to think about, but you got to do it on autopilot because you don't have time to start getting out the pen and paper and calculate everything and then play your shot. You've got to do this bam, bam, bam. It's just going to be automatic for you for a, after a while and we're going to show you how to do that inside the mixologist course. All right, let's get to our final ingredient and it's last but not least. I'm excited for this one. All right guys, final ingredient here is being able to identify what type of opponent are you up against. As early as the warm-up or in the first couple of games, you should be able to kind of no, okay, today I'm up against the classic pusher and how am I gonna play them? Today I'm playing a certain volley or today I'm playing a power player. Today I'm playing an all-court player. You wanna be able to identify that quickly. You also wanna look for, within all these different types of players, they usually have different strengths. Like, oh, uh, this pusher, they can just keep the ball in play, but when you approach on them, they've got really great passing shots. Their, their forehand is stronger than their backhand. You know, things like that. Certain volume, they've got a great forehand volume, but they don't get down low for the backhand volley. These are the things that you want to look for. What are the weaknesses? And you focus on those weaknesses. And then you also want to go, 
what are my strengths? How can I beat the pusher by using my strengths? Okay, not forcing something. Don't go, well, I, I hear against pushers that you need to come to the net and overpower them. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. Well, what if that's not your game? What if you're not an overpowering type player? What if your volleys are not great? Is that how you're gonna beat the pusher? Most likely not. There you go, guys. There's your six essential ingredients to becoming a mixologist, which is so important. Remember, this is going to help you win more matches by throwing your opponent off balance, by you playing a more unpredictable game rather than letting your opponent get into the zone. This is part of a, uh, a free series that's promoting my new course, The Mixologist, okay? So all transparency, I'm trying to uh, show you I can help you by actually helping you that's leading into my new course, The Mixologist. Now, if you've watched this video and you're like, I'm all in, Pete. This is really cool. This is exactly what I need for my game. And you don't want to wait. You want to be one of the first ones to get in. You can see over here to the side, I've got an early bird button that you can basically go in and you're going to have a nice surprise there for you. Uh, so you can get in early and I have some extra incentive there for you if you want to do that. Now, uh, coming up in video number two, if you're somebody who wants to say, well, I need to see a little more before I decide if I want to go for this whole mixology thing. In video number two, I want you to be looking at your inbox in a couple days because what I'm going to send you is a video on the number one skill that I learned from Nick Saviano that you want to focus on when you go out there and play. From your very first ball, this is what I want you to focus on every single time. And what's going to help you do is kind of build a base for your whole game. I think this sets up the base for your whole game to play around. And I think it also is something when you do it, you're gonna be able to play in what they call the zone a lot more often than your opponents if you're able to uh, accomplish and master this skill. So you wanna be looking for it in video number two. Also, I did promise a special prize for everybody. So by watching this video and commenting below, which I'm gonna tell you what I want you to comment on in a second, you are entered into a raffle if you can comment on all these videos to win a free clip sensor. Now what this does is something you put right into your, uh, your strings here and it will measure how hard you're hitting the ball, how much spin you're hitting on the ball, how fast the ball's going, and it's gonna be a really cool way that you can kind of see how you can vary your game. So comment below and here's today's question. What is your biggest challenge. When you look at the list, we're gonna put the list right up here. So there's your six essential ingredients. When you look at these six ingredients, what is the one that is the most challenging to you? Or if there are two or three that you're like, man, that they're tough for me. I just don't, just don't have that right now. List that below, ask any questions that you have on this, and I'll be reading all your comments and chiming in and helping you answer your biggest challenges. All right, guys, so be looking for video number two. Again, if you're like, I'm totally into this, I love it, and you wanna learn how to become a certified mixologist, click the early bird button right there, and you can get access before anybody else does. Thanks so much. Share this video. There's some Facebook shares right here. Share it with your friends, your tennis community, and I really, really appreciate you all watching today's video. I had a ton of fun making it, and we'll be back in a couple days with video number two.